Why do you Recorded sound is everywhere, but it wasn't always this way. Before 1857, it was impossible to capture, lost to the passage of time. Enter Edward, Leon, Scott, de Martinville. We'll just call him Ed. Ed was a French printer and bookseller, running a humble shop in central Paris in the 1800s. Now, he was no scientist, but had big aspirations to become an inventor. Whilst proofreading a physics textbook, Ed stumbled upon some diagrams of the human ear. He wondered, if a camera replicated an eye to record an image, how about some sort of mechanical ear to record sound to paper? With the help of instrument maker Rudolf Koenig, Ed began building a device. He called it the phonautograph. The device had a speaking cone, which caused a sharp pin to vibrate, etching patterns onto a soot-covered piece of paper. Ed thought that one would be able to read the paper squiggles like written text. In 1857, his device was patented. The concept was pretty ingenious at the time, but it was far too difficult to make out any words from these squiggles. The phonautograph never caught on and was doomed to obscurity. Ed tragically passed away in 1879, with no knowledge that his recordings would ever be heard. Across the Atlantic, a young inventor was making waves of his own. Thomas Edison invented the phonograph in 1877, a similar device in which the sound was recorded to a tinfoil cylinder. And his device allowed playback. Edison became an international celebrity, hailed as the inventor of sound recording. Fast forward to 2008. Scientists realized that the microscopic cameras they used in particle physics could be used to scan obsolete recordings without damaging them further. They were now able to play back Ed's recordings for the first time. One of these was a snippet of the French folk song Au Claire de la Lune. Originally thought to be sung by a small child, they found the correct playback speed and realized it could actually be Ed's voice singing. It is now considered to be the earliest recording of a recognizable human voice, predating Edison by 17 years. He inadvertently created the first ever recorded sound that could be replayed, and it took the rest of us 150 years to realize. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with friends.